Here is how you could literally double your sales revenue overnight if you pay attention to these three things. A lot of times you notice that some of the people you're watching probably on the internet, they tell you to do a lot of calls if you want to increase the revenue from your sales calls. That's one aspect. It is something that you could work on, but it's not the most important thing. And it's certainly not the first thing to pay attention to. So what, what are the top three things that we use in our own businesses and the business of other entrepreneurs when we work with them to help them increase the sales and the revenue from the sales pretty much overnight? Here are the three things you gotta pay attention to to increase sales. One is obviously the volume of calls. Second is call conversion rate. What percent of people you talk to actually convert and purchase your products or services? Thirdly is the average order value for each order that's been essentially purchased by your customers. It's only a function of revenue, it's only a function of these three things. It's nothing else and it's nothing to make it complicated. So you should be all the time measuring every single one of these factors and try to figure out how you could improve upon each of them. However, what you need to do is you need to work backwards. So this is, like I said, unlike what some of those self-proclaimed internet sales gurus tell you, you actually have to work backwards. A lot of people are going to tell you, you know what, you're not making a lot of revenue from your sales calls. Go make more calls. Go make 100 calls a day, 1,000 calls a day, 10,000 calls a day. Dumb. It's really dumb. It's wasteful, you don't do that until the very end. So what do you work backwards? Working backwards is you start with first increasing the average order value. Then you increase conversion rate of your sales calls. And then and only then you start increasing the volume of calls. You don't start increasing volume of calls when your calls have really crappy conversion rates and your average order value is down in the toilet. You only do that after you're done with the first two factors that have the most important advantage and the most important levers in increasing the revenue. Let's go one by one. How do we increase average order value? How do we increase conversion rates? And then finally, how do we increase sales volume without each individual actually doing any more hours per day of work doing sales calls. And that's very important. So let's go one by one. How do you increase the average order value? There's multiple ways you could do that. The very first thing you should explore is just increasing your prices. Assuming you have a fantastic product or service it's all the proven itself. People are buying it. People are enjoying it. You have good word of mouth and positive reviews. Assuming all of those uh, are taken care of. The first thing you could do is increase your prices. A lot of times when I look at what other businesses are charging, it's so easy to literally overnight double the sales by doubling the price. I have done doubling, tripling, quadrupling without any decrease in the conversion rates or you know, any increase in the objections. Most people do not charge enough when the product is good and has value. And, and it's actually a really detrimental to your business because it conveys their own message. It says you're not confident. It says that it's not good quality. Remember, there's a reason Lamborghini and Ferrari are the price they are. Yes, they're good products uh, and cars, but you know, they're not that much better than a Porsche. They're not that much better than a top of the line BMW or Mercedes, right? To justify in two or three, four X, five X the price, it's the brand. And if you want to have a strong brand, you got to charge appropriately. So make sure you first explore increasing the price. A lot of people are always scared. So if you're scared, you set up an experiment. It's very easy to set up experiment for everything I say here today, where half the time, 20% of the time, 30% of the time, your website visitors see a certain price, for example, the others see your control price, your current price, and then you'll see what wins. Of course, always be a scientist. The second way you could increase average order value is by upsells. So you go to McDonald's, you order your burger, they always tell you, hey, would you like fries with that? How about a drink? How about an ice cream? How about, how about, how about, how about? You know, all of those, they're not nothing new about upsells. 
People have done it. It's a proven strategy. You don't need to recreate the wheel, include an upsell. How do you do that? Two ways. You either provide more of what you've already sold or you provide a complementary thing to it. So even Apple, go try to order something on Apple's website. You'll see there's a bunch of different things they offer you. They have two pages of upsells. One is more of what you got, more CPU, more RAM. Then the second page upsells are complementary stuff. Here's another example. Let's say you're selling toothpaste. In your upsell, you now say, you know what? Hey, how about I give you three more half price? So now that's the same sort of a product and you're selling more of it. And then after that, you say, okay, great. How about I now also give you a toothbrush and a dental floss? So that's another way, upsell. If they don't agree to the upsell, you could always do a downsell, which is again, very similar, but you now anchor the person on a price. And if they don't like that price of this upsell, you give them something else of a lower price. Sometimes they accept that. It has to be different and make sense, obviously. You have to do experiments. Last way, that is a major way that you could increase your average order value is increasing the lifetime value of each customer. How do you do that? So toothpaste, toothbrush, and then what can you give them over time? You know, you could say, hey, how about a dentist visit? How about retainers? How about tooth whitening? And then how about you add, you say, hey, if you uh, subscribe to this subscription plan for your toothpaste, so that it increases your lifetime value of each customer, I'm going to give you 50% off, 80% off, 90% off. You know what? It actually, a lot of times, if you do proper calculations and do a lot of tests, you'll see that this creates a win-win for both the consumer and yourself. And that's really important. Now, let's say you figured out your average order value. Now, how do we increase the sales conversion rates for each call? The second best way to increase revenue overnight is to increase the sales conversion rate. Let's say you could go from 15% conversion rates to 30% conversion rates. That's an overnight doubling of your revenue from sales calls. How do you increase sales conversion rate revenue? This is how you do it. First of all, you got to make sure you do a lot of call recording. Anybody who does calls, whether it's you or your team, every call has to be recorded and reviewed by your team so you can figure out what's working, what's not working. Second, you need to have training, regular training for your sales team. This should be in terms of both daily, they need to know exactly what the calls are that are scheduled for that day, what's the strategy, to listen as a group to call recordings. Both of those two are very important so that when people go into calls for the day, they're already ready, so they don't have to improvise right there and then, even if they're experienced. Two, looking at past examples allows the team to be like, ah, this is good, this is bad. And the third way is doing one-on-one -on -one training with those who are struggling, doing role play, doing a lot of mock calls until they get over the areas where they have the issue. And it's all about repetition. If they don't get it, you say, okay, that was good. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. If this still doesn't resolve it, you could have a call quality. If, you, if, you if you're doing proper tracking and you can tell call qualities, you could give the poor quality calls to new team members or members who are struggling so they get repetition without any risk to the business. So that was the second thing. The third best method to increase sales call conversion rates is to focus your team, or if you're doing the sales calls yourself, on conversations. I always have to talk to our team about this. It's so important to have a normal conversation. People sometimes go read tactics, watch, you know, random gurus on the internet. They learn some tactics and then they write the script and they go into calls and the entire time they're in their head. Oh, I'm going to use scarcity now. Oh, I'm going to do such and such right now. Oh, I'm going to do objection. No, 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 no. Just have a normal conversation. Those always do better. Make the person laugh. Make the person, you know, understand what's going on. But most importantly, listen to what they're saying instead of listening to your own head and what you're about to say next. That's absolutely the most important part of any sales call. So for example, if you have watched Grant Cardone doing live calls, sometimes you see, sometimes he's doing content, but it's a recording from an event. Yeah, he just randomly picks up the phone and says, he doesn't have to think about what he's going to say. He just listens to what the person says and then goes from there. So that's really important. If you want to get this right, you have to focus on that, not tactics first. Tactics, et cetera, don't make any sense until you could have a 
proper conversation because someone who could tell you're not really listening to them and you're trying to do your tactics, you're just going to repel them right away and it's game over. The fourth strategy I have for increasing call uh, conversion rates is when you start a call, immediately, one of the first things you got to ask is, hey, why are you here and how can I help you get to where you want to go? This puts the onus on the person calling you who explain their struggles. And once they do that, you have the next strategy, which is allows you to confirm with that with them that, hey, this is what you've been doing. You just explained to me. This is what you're struggling with. And what you've been doing has not worked. Correct? Correct. Nice. So now you got an agreement. They've already told you they need your help, right? You didn't try to convince them. You didn't do any weird, pushy, salesy stuff. They told you right at the beginning of the call, here's what I'm struggling with. This is what I need you to help me with. And then you confirm with them, well, this is what you did before and this didn't work, right? Right. Then you go to the next stage, which is makes the entire conversation a lot easier. So the next thing you do is you got to tell them exactly how you could help them. This is obviously not related to what you normally do without going into the specifics of, you know, plans and pricing and features, et cetera. You just give them the overall, this is what we do. And this is how we do it very quickly. This should be about to, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Then, and only then, if there is no questions, you tell them how they can sign up and you briefly tell them about the products and services and how it's going to work. So it's very obvious for them how it's going to work, when they're going to get their services and exactly what they're going to get. This is now where the tactics come in, but they have to be genuine and legitimate. Don't do things that are unethical because you're watching again some other videos. So it's important for you at this juncture, you show them and tell them exactly what they need to do to sign up. So now you're going into closing the sale. You got to tell them, this is what you got to do. I want you to go on this page to sign up. I want you to give me your credit card. I want you to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You got to sign them up depending on your system that you have. And if appropriate and legitimate, you tell them about any source of scarcity. Is this only you know three items you have left? Can you only do one consultation per day, per month? Whatever it is, you tell them that. And then you provide a legitimate deadline that is actual, real, and you're going to stick to it. So you tell people, hey, okay, so all good. Just to let you know, our prices are increasing tomorrow by $500. Or, you know, I, only, I can only offer this at this price by end of today after that the price has changed. Or you say, you know what? I only limit this to serious applicants for our product or service. So if you're ready to sign up, please sign up by the end of the day, because if you don't sign up by end of tomorrow, I'm gonna go to the next person in our wait list. If you actually have a wait list and these are all legitimate. So this now at the very end, you brought in scarcity and deadline to again, give yourself a boost of conversion rate. But if you don't have those, you'll still have a fantastic conversion rate with everything else that I mentioned before. What about objections? What do you do with objections? What I do with objections is I first figure out what the source is because they are always said in a different way, but it's usually only two or three things. It's usually cost or they don't think it's worth it or they have to talk about to somebody else or they have to think about it, but they're all come back to, you know, normally they don't either trust you or they don't think see the value and that's why it's expensive. Normally what I try to do is try to make them laugh. See how silly their reasoning is. I try to get into it and try to get them laugh, but this comes with a lot of practice. And if you're at a stage in your business where you're getting more leads than you actually need, you could be very confident in a way that you absolutely don't need them. You're not pushing them. You don't really care about the sale. You care about helping them. Once they sense that, especially during the, the part where you're facing the objections, it's more likely to get that conversion going. One major other thing I'm going to say about increasing sales conversion rates is you can also set up a lot of different experiments with your follow-up emails, with your follow-up sequence, with specific parts of the script. But if you do that, make sure you do it systematically. Where half the time you stick to exactly what you do, as always, the other half, you're doing this new experiment and only change one element in your call at a time. Only change one of the follow-up emails and that's it. Or only change one line in your script and that's it. And keep doing that. Doing these experiments over time, you're going to keep getting increasing conversion rates and you're in this in the long term. And if you're a patient, you're going to see your conversion rates going from 5 to 10 to 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60%, depending on what it is. You could easily get to, I would say, reasonable to expect a 40% conversion rate for anything of an average order value of $5,000 and above.
if it's cheaper, obviously it's going to be a lot cheaper. And sometimes we don't need to do sales calls at all if it's something that's really cheap. Again, remember, I suggested that you increase your prices and create a product or service that merits that increase in price, obviously. So that's the second way that we talked about, which was regarding increasing sales conversion rates. What's the third way to increase sales revenue? The third one and the one that you should consider at the very end, once you've increased the average order value, once you've increased the conversion rates is increasing the call volume. How can you do that? There's three strategies. A, decrease the number and percentage of cancellations. B, make sure you do not allow booked appointments for those that have the highest likelihood of cancellation and lowest likelihood of conversion rates. How can you tell that? You could tell that over time if you keep good track and have a system to allow you to do lead scoring. Lead scoring, essentially, you could make it very basic, good, average, poor. And you could have different markers in your calendar booking system where you could tell what's good quality, what's not after you've done, a, let's say, a thousand calls. And this is usually, hey, are you uh, one of the questions you could always put in your call request form is, hey, are you willing to invest? Yes or no? If it's a no, usually poor quality. When are you going to take advantage and be a, of our services? Or when are you planning to solve your problem, whatever it is? Right now versus later. Usually right now, people are better quality versus those that say later. But every business is a little bit different. So you need about, uh, to collect data for about a thousand calls or so. Then you'll be able to see patterns. And then you're going to reject calls that are of poor quality. So they don't even get booked in your calendar. That's another way to increase call volume. Why? Because when we say call volume, it's about completed volume, not uh, you know booked appointments. It's completed appointments. So the first thing you want to increase is, is increase. This way, you reduce cancellation rates, let's say from 40% to 20%. All of a sudden, you're doing a lot more calls than you would normally do in the same number of hours per individual. No extra work required. Another way to increase call volume is to start, once you figure out the cancellation, everything is optimized. You increase the volume by increasing the number of team members you have. This will allow you to, if it's cold calls, to do more outreach, you have more people, or if these are calls that are coming in via your ads and being booked, they're warm leads, then again, you just turn up your ads, you get more, and then you'll be able to process more per day, per week, per month, and that's it. So to recap, if you want to increase the revenue from your sales calls, you got to pay attention to only three things, and you have to work backwards. First, Fix the average order value. Increase your prices. That's usually the easiest thing, or an upsell, or a downsell, or increase the lifetime value. Second thing to do is once you have fixed that, go and increase your sales call conversion rates. Have a conversation. Don't be weird and let the person tell you how they want you to help them and then go and help them. Simple as that. The third way to increase sales call revenue, and this is the one that you should utilize last, is by increasing the number of calls you do either yourself or as an organization or business on a per day, per week, per month basis. Simple math. So if you make a, an increase of 30% in each of them, which normally is possible to do, if you're keeping very good track of your numbers, I can normally look at a business's numbers and within a day tell you how they could increase their sales calls revenue by two to three X within a few weeks. Because here's the math. Let's say you increase your average order value by 30%. Let's say you increase your conversion rates by another 30%, and then you increase the call volume by reducing cancellations by 30%. So each of those are an individual improvement of 30%. Overall, this is an increase in your revenue of 2x, more than 2x. In fact, if I do the calculation, here it is, 1.3x times 1.3x times 1.3x, you got two point, almost 2.2x increasing your revenue if you just increase the, the performance at each of these three things by 30%. Simple as that. This is how you increase your sales revenue by double or more simply overnight. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. By the way, you have never watched any of these. A quick introduction before I wrap up. My name is Beruz Momeni. 
I'm the CEO and founder here at entrepreneurcorner.com, where we help businesses double, triple, quadruple their revenues with no weird tactics, just by focusing on their sales, marketing, and hiring. If you enjoyed today's episode, go ahead and share it with a friend. If you're watching this on uh, one of the social media channels that you love and enjoy, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future episodes. And I hope to talk to you soon. See you next time.